call this meeting to order. Dr. Thomason, roll call. Good evening, President Reese, members of the board. Please let the record show that all five board members are present tonight. All right. We're going to go ahead and have our moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. President Reese. Mrs. Whitener. I move that we approve tonight's agenda. Any questions or comments on the agenda? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 5-0. 5.0 superintendent's report. Good evening, President Reese and members of the board. At this time, I would like to turn it over to um, Michelle Reese, who has some special awards, recognitions, and presentations for us tonight. Michelle. Good evening, President Reese, Cabinet, and of course, community. This evening, we have some special awards and recognitions, including our points of pride. I'd first like to welcome up Bridges Principal Sherry Richards. you can't hear me <laughs> uh, the cool thing about this is families contributed to help get this up there and it helped create our maker space which is open for business now families at the bridges have their names engraved on this bridge thanks to Jonathan and Emily's hard work and this is a higgly thing to me because how many people reach across the district and support each other like this. Thank you guys so very much. So if you haven't come by, we'd love to show it to you and show, show you the maker space. Okay, now we have our points of pride. And I'm gonna tell you these were tough decisions in a building of excellence. Excellence from 
the parents, the teachers, the kids, support staff, everybody. But when you think about Bridges Elementary School, there's a face that will pop into your mind. It's a shining, positive face. This teacher I was fortunate enough to interview almost two years ago, hired her and begged her to come with me to the Bridges. She's all about relationships and kids. She steps out, makes a difference every day. And if I'm having a bad day, guess where I go? I go sit in her classroom. What do you need, Mrs. Richards? Nothing, I just wanna sit in here. So Brooke Desatel, please come up. the most amazing kindergarten teacher ever and every parent that has had her think their kids the only kid in the room <laughs> all right <laughs> yes I would love for her to right here <laughs> yes all right um, and her family's out there because we have a lot of Bridges people. Chantel would stand up in a minute, right? <laughs> All right. Next we go to our classified staff member. And this is a person that is devoted to excellence. I also worked with her at Power Ranch. And when I found out we were moving to the Bridges, I said, I want Chris. And I want Chris in that attendance position because she's going to do it right. And she's going to build relationships with families and kids. And when she calls and says, your kid is late again, they don't even get mad at her. <laughs> so Chris Nelson is an amazing team player. And I can't even believe I'm so blessed to get to work with her. <laughs> you want to introduce your family? I know they're here. I have my husband, Jason Nelson, <laughs> Myla, she goes to Power Ranch, and Leah go to Power Ranch, third grade and sixth grade, and Carter, he goes to eighth grade, Sossaman. All right, this is the amazing assistant principal of the Bridges Elementary, and he's going to take over. All right, so I'm not going to go off the cuff like Sherry, but uh, I wrote something up. So our two volunteer points of pride are Amy and Sherry. So Amy Reckia and Sherry Gordon. Both exhibit unparalleled dedication to our school and most importantly our students as they serve as co-presidents on our PTO. They both bring a wealth of knowledge from their marketing and sales backgrounds and our school has reaped the benefits from obtaining numerous business donations organizing the best fall festival I've ever seen, finding donation money for soccer jerseys, and supporting us with purchasing various programs to help support our students. We are blown away by what you've accomplished in such a short period of time. These two are simply incredible, and the Bridges family can't thank you enough. Amy and Sherry. Hello, my husband is in Chicago, so you won't see him. <laughs> His name is Steven, um, and I have my son, eldest, Carson, who is a seventh grader at Sossaman, and my little man, Austin, is in fifth grade at Bridges. So I am fortunate to have my husband in town this week, and my husband's right there, Michael Gordon. 
And I have my son, Julian Gordon. He's at Sossaman, seventh grader. And Xavier Gordon, sixth grader at the Bridges. And I also have a daughter who's not here. She's 20 years old, and she's doing whatever 20-year-olds do right now. <laughs> All right, sorry everybody, but we saved the best for last. This is our student, Timothy. Timothy, just come on up. <laughs> Timothy lives life by the mantra, skill, will, and determination. Whether it's running for student council president, class representative, or belting his catchy original hit song called The Human Body in front of his science class, he gives 100% at all times. Tim works harder than anyone I know and isn't afraid to take risks. If you are familiar with growth mindset and grit, this guy is the definition of both. Nothing stands in the way of him reaching his goals. Thank you, Tim, for inspiring all of us at Bridges to be the best we can be. Your impact is immeasurable. I would like to thank all of you for this award, and I would like to introduce my family. Coming up first, from I'm at the door, my grandma and grandpa. <laughs> and my best mom, Sonia Chesley. <laughs> My dad and Mason are out of, well, they are driving somewhere. I just don't know. But the last one here is my big brother, Cody. I would like to thank all of you for this award. Now I'd like to introduce from our wonderful Gateway Point Elementary School, Principal Tim Fountain. I'm not doing it alone, come on up. 
All right, uh, good evening, uh, members of the governing board. Thanks for having us out tonight, Dr. Thomas. And it's always an honor to get to recognize some of the wonderful people on our campus. And I would say the same thing that Sherry said. It's always tough to, to pick the great people on your campus. Um, we always ask for some buy-in and input from our staff, as I know a lot of schools do. And it's wonderful to hear the great things that uh, they have to say about some of their colleagues. So uh, we look forward to recognizing them this evening. All right, we'll, we'll go ahead and start with our certified staff member. Um, and this teacher is one who, um, when I came into Gateway a, a year ago, um, this teacher was in the process of moving grade levels. And anyone who's ever done that knows that's not an easy thing to do uh, when you're comfortable, especially when you have a new boss coming into the mix at the same time. Um, and what I really admire about her is that in that transition time, she is one of those teachers who really just grabs on to everything that is there. Um, over the course of the last year and a half, she's been just a really positive influence on campus. Um, she's one who, the teachers will tell you that when we try to roll out a new initiative, she's one of those people who says, I want to know more. I want to figure out how to do it. Um, we are fortunate to have some coaches on campus, and she welcomes those coaches into her room and really has taken a, a concerted effort to learn and grow and, and really be a role model in that regard on campus. Um, she has a positive attitude, a great person to be around. Her students really enjoy her class, and so we are honored tonight to recognize Miss Jennifer Taylor. Congratulations. You want to say hi to your family? Well, unfortunately, my husband was working, but I have two of my lovely daughters with me, Anika. She's as seventh grader at Sossaman. And my, uh, my other daughter is standing in the back with the camera ready. That's Peyton, and she goes to Higley High. All right, for our classified staff member, um, there are about a million and one things that I could say about this person and how wonderful they are. Um, if I give you more than about two, um, I probably will pay for it tomorrow because they're not very happy that I made them come out here tonight. Public recognition is definitely not her thing, um, but our front office secretary is absolutely amazing. Um, like many campuses, um, and I know the governing board appreciates this too, when, when we went through the fun with you know, lunch aids and that kind of stuff, and we're trying to fill gaps and all of those pieces, um, Kelly is truly one of those people that would do anything on campus at any time. Um, would, you don't even have to ask her to do it. She doesn't want to be thanked for doing it. She will fill in that role. Um, I often will find out, like, oh, our, you know, somebody was absent today. There was a crossing guard out. There was a lunch aid out. There was, and uh, oh, Kelly took care of it. Okay, you know, it, it got done. It was taken care of. It was covered. It was there. Um, she asks me every single day, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? Um, and she takes that same approach with really everyone on campus. What can I do for you? She's there to. Um, serve our families, serve our teachers at all times, and then, like I said, is more than happy to duck the limelight. So um, when we were turning in our points of pride, that might normally go through your secretary, and I had to hide it from Kelly and submit it myself because I think she would have changed the name to make sure that um, she didn't have to be recognized tonight. But she really is wonderful, and we're very grateful to have her. So congratulations, Kelly. <laughs> hate me. I have my, my, my husband here with me tonight, Chuck. All right, I am Katie Harris. I'm the assistant principal at Gateway, and I get the honor of recognizing our volunteer. And we have Mrs. Lloyd, and she has been a wonderful addition to our Gateway staff. She greets our students every day at the crosswalk and waves to all of our families. After her crossing guard duties, she volunteers her time in the library and in classrooms. During lunch, she ensures that students are playing safely at recess and having fun. She takes the time to build relationships with students and staff members around campus. After lunch duty, she heads back into the classrooms to continue her volunteer work um, before heading to crossing guard again. So she is one busy lady. Thanks for all that you do for Gateway. All right. 
right, and last but not least, we're going to have Miss Ella come up here. So guys, this is Miss Ella Winters, and she is an amazing student. She thinks outside the box. She is thoughtful and considerate of her peers. She's always willing to help friends in need without being asked. She is eager to participate in all activities and is always volunteering to help the teacher. One day she approached our lit coach and asked if the class could do a service project to teach kindergarten students how to read. If you haven't figured out by now, Ella wants to be a teacher when she grows up. And quite frankly, I think she could run her own third grade class right now. She is Gator Gray, and we are so honored and proud to have her as a student at Gateway Point, Ms. Ella Winters. I'm going to embarrass Ella and say one more thing. So we had our fall carnival, and Ella's mom, Jill, is our PTO president as well. And it, would, it deserves a woo. Um, and we decided to change it up this year at our carnival so one of the prizes that students could win for attending was to get to be a principal for the day. Ella actually wanted to do that. I was ready to trade. I'm like, can I be a third grader for a day? This sounds good. Um, so of course, immediately as soon as the carnival's over, there's Ella at my side. So when are we doing this? Like, She's ready to rock and roll all the time. Um, I think I'm going to get a couple extra evals done. Sheila, I hope that's okay, but I, she'll do a great job, I promise. Um, so she's just that kind of kiddo that really is, is there at the forefront, and I know that she'll be great, uh, just like our buddy Tim over here that I'm looking. I want to hear that song, by the way. I want to get in on that. So uh, congratulations to you, Ella. <laughs> we almost left out Miss Wilson's family. Oops. You want to introduce them? Um, I have my mom with me and my dad and my brother. He's in eighth grade at Cooley. His name's Jacob, and I also have my friend Taylor and her mom. In addition to recognizing the wonderful points of pride from our schools each week, we do like to bring forth our outstanding employees from our departments. And today I'd like to invite Finance Director Gary Holland to the stage. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you and good evening. Can you hear me? So tonight, I have the privilege and the honor, actually, to thank um, one of my outstanding employees. Um, I say that as one because in, our, in the Department of Finance, we only have one for everything. So we have one accounts payable, one accounts receivable, one procurement, one uh, food and nutrition. Tonight, um, it was a very tough decision to try to figure out exactly who uh, we should give this award to this year. Um, however, the person who stood out the most to me, I'm um, new here at the district, is Justin Wilson. Justin <coughs> um, is our accounts receivable person. As I mentioned, he is a team of one. 
um, and he provides service and support to the entire district. Um, so as you can imagine, with 13 schools and all of these departments and all of these people um, asking for support, assistance, um, Justin's always right there. Every time I ask him to, um, to do anything, he's always willing to go above and beyond to, um, even, he, even though he has a mountain of work on his desk and everybody's pulling him in a different direction, he always is willing to um, accept anything you ask him to do. You know, he, he's willing to help, it doesn't matter. Um, he always does it with a smile and he always makes you feel um, like you're the only one that he has to help that specific day knowing that that is totally not the case. Um, he is amazing, and I just want to say thank you very much for all that you do and the person that you are. Okay, before, um, before we go to the next piece, I just kind of wanted to read a few comments that some of his coworkers have said about Justin, um, consistently exceeds expectations. A ton of patience and treats everyone with respect and kindness. Uh, he is in a very demanding position. He's very detail-oriented, but he's still very approachable, friendly, great sense of humor, problem solver, finds an answer to any question, regardless if it's not even his area. Um, he's a wonderful colleague, organized, diligent, there's so many. I could just keep going on and on and on. Um, he does a fantastic job, and we at Higley here are very honored and appreciate him so very, very much. So. so what what I'd like to do also is, because Justin here um, supports all of the Higley family, I'd like to also recognize his family who supports him every day, which helps him be a better person for us. So Justin, if you would please in invite your family up here. Well, this works out pretty good because my son asked me not to point him out to anybody when we were sitting down. <laughs> This is my son, Brody. He's eight. Uh, Rory is five. Piper is 10, and my wife, Candace. And my three-year-old is passed out after her busy day today, so.
Yeah, go ahead. For upcoming events, um, President Weiss, members of the board, next week I want to remind you that we have education, business, and government coming together for our Gilbert Chamber Good Government Breakfast Series, and that's right here at the district office at 7.15 a.m., and you're all invited. And then, shortly after that, we have our Thanksgiving holiday, so we'll be off on November 24th and 25th, followed by our next board meeting in December, on December 14th at 5.30 for the work study and 6.30 for our board meeting. Then shortly after that, we start our winter break, and that lasts from December 23rd to January 6th, and that should take us to the new year. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. So for board comments, there's kind of so much. Um, we have the Williamsfield High School uh, Black Hawk Regiment, get it, get the right words, that are state champions for ABOTA. Higley High School went to, they competed in the state championship um, two weeks ago, so their band competed. We have both of our, our high school football teams that are going to the last round of the playoffs. So there's a lot going on there. We have, um, we are accepting applications for appointment for the board. We will be losing Mrs. Whitener. She has put in her resignation. So those applications are available through Mrs. Reach through the district office. Um, and they're accepted until Monday the 21st so that we can get through the appointment process um, and have a new board member um, available for the new year in January when we start. Um, I'm trying to think, there's a lot going on. Yeah, I just want to remind everyone next uh, Wednesday, if you'd like to join me in the morning, is uh, the Coronado uh, Turkey Trot. So you're welcome to help me at that because I will be there. But if everyone I, can take a day off and go yes, to Coronado. Yes, it is so cool. It is so cool. Um, but yes, but I, we'll I just want to tell everyone how wonderful a community that we have, that we do an event and it just continues throughout the day, is the uh, students at uh, uh, Coronado made the turkey bags and decorations and they made a lot of decorations and after their uh, turkey trot event all the decorations will be going to the uh, Chandler Boys and Girls Club for 680 families that will be having Thanksgiving dinner on Wednesday night and all the decorations and how beautiful everything will be set up is compliments of the children of Coronado so it's just really it's just such a special when you see a, an event and it just keeps giving and giving throughout the day for, for, for the community too as well so just wanted to share that with you. Very nice. Any other board comments? All right. So we are at 6.0, request to speak to the governing board. We value <clears throat> input from our constituents. This time has been set aside for anyone from the audience who wishes to address the board. Please remember, this is not an appropriate venue to evaluate, discuss, or criticize district personnel. Policy KEB provides a process for complaints about personnel. Speakers should be aware that false statements about individuals may result in civil liability. Members of the board may not discuss items that are not specifically identified on the agenda. Therefore, pursuant to ARS 38-431.01H, action taken as a result of public comment will be limited to directing staff to study the matter, responding to any criticism, or scheduling the matter for further consideration or dis and decision at a later date. Please, input your, or please limit your remarks to three minutes. And I will go ahead and start with John Evans. When you come up, if you could just state your name and then you have three minutes. Thank you. You bet. My name is John Evans. I'm a counselor at Higley High School. Uh, President Reese and distinguished members of the governing board um, as I said, I'm a counselor at Higley High School. I'm one of the counselors that will be speaking on behalf of the counselors in the Higley Unified School District. 
Uh, we love the students we work with and are very happy with our jobs in the district. The matter we bring to your attention tonight has to do with our compensation. In 2012, the counselors in the district were compensated an equal amount as the teachers received from their 301 money. The money may have come from a different fund, but the compensation was equal. Over the next three years, the teachers continued to receive the extra compensation from the 301 money, but the counselors did not receive any extra compensation. The last time the matter concerning equal compensation for the counselors was brought before the school board. The matter was tabled after a participant in the discussion questioned some of the counselors that some of the counselors were paid similar compensation as school psychologists. We would like to clear up uh, some misinformation at this time and advise the board that the counselors are now on the, are on the same pay scale as the teachers are and are, on, on the, uh, are evaluated by the same instrument as the teachers. The pay scale for a school psychologist starts in the neighborhood of uh, $56,000. Um, counselors in the district are required to possess a master's degree. Um, and our pay scale starts at $38,000, just like the teachers. However, first year teachers uh, will make more than any of, any of the counselors in the district this year um, if they receive the 301 money and the counselors are not equally compensated. We know of no other school district that does not compensate their counselors and teachers equally. The money may not come out of the same coffer, but the compensation is equal. The counselors in the other districts are paid equitably with the teachers without extra days of work. Tonight you will be voting whether or not to approve the 2016-2017 Certified Performance Pay Plan. If you are advised that 100% of the certified staff in the district voted in favor of this plan, you will have been advised in error. The certified counselors in the district were not allowed to cast a vote. Counselors in the district have missed out on up to $20,000 as this is the fourth year in a row that counselors have not received equitable compensation as the teachers while working on the same pay scale. We are here to ask for equity in our compensation and we believe that the members of the governing board were, if you're aware of the discrepancy, you would also be in favor of equal compensation for the counselors in this district. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll just go in order. Um, I was following along with you. Melissa, I don't want to mess it up, Galahar. My name is Melissa Gallahar, and I'm a new counselor in this district. This is my first year at Williamsfield High School, and I was drawn to the district for two reasons. I recently moved to the East Valley, and secondly, I heard wonderful things about Williamsfield High School. I have been a counselor for over 14 years, and I, along with my colleagues, have great passion for working with kids and families to help them get the most out of their high school experience and achieve their post-high school goals. As stated previously, beginning teachers start in the district at a base salary of 38,000 and are only required to have a bachelor's degree. That beginning teacher with zero experience in education has the opportunity to earn over $5,000 extra from Proposition 301 and pay for performance this year without working any extra days. A beginning counselor in this, in this district is required to have a minimum of a master's degree and is also on the teacher pay scale and therefore has a starting base salary of 38,000. The master's degree earns a one-time $500 bonus in this district. The current evaluation tool utilized to evaluate, evaluate counselors is the same tool used to evaluate teachers. Therefore, the beginning teacher who has a four-year degree is in line to make $4,700 more than a beginning counselor who not only has a four-year degree, but must also possess a master's degree to meet the minimum requirements to qualify for the role of a counselor in the Higley Unified School District. In my two previous districts, Chandler Unified School District and Tullison Union High School District, 
counselors were paid equitable compensation and also received addendum contracts for working extra days beyond the contracted days. Our data shows us that Scottsdale Unified School District makes no distinction and pays counselors from the same funds as teachers for everything. No difference anywhere for salary, calendar, or pay for performance. Summer stipends are also provided for summer work. Mesa Public Schools, Casa Grande Union High School District, Tempe Union High School District, Apache Junction Unified School District, Gilbert Public Schools, and Phoenix Union High School District all compensate counselors with <coughs> equitable salary. All we are asking for is for you to take into consideration equitable compensation for counselors in this district as well. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And then, it, is it Dion Grady? Very nice. Hi, I'm Dion Grady, and I'm also a counselor at Williamsfield High School. Um, so basically, in, con in conclusion, I hope that you understand that we love our job. We love what we do because we care about the success and welfare of our students. We each work hard at our respective schools and appreciate the support that we receive. Many of us handle caseloads well above 600 students in each high school and over 1,000 in our middle schools each and every day. Work late nights at times as well as through our lunches and sometimes over our breaks, just as teachers do, because we love what we do. Are you aware that the current average tenure of a certified counselor in this district is about 1.6 years, with no current counselor having five full years of experience with this district? Counselors, unfortunately, are feeling unappreciated due to the inequitable compensation year after year that they are leaving to find districts that value their importance. We stay because of the passion for working with students within the Higley Unified School District and to help them enter a world in which they are college and career ready, allowing them to have opportunities to be successful in any career they choose. Today, counselors were told that a pay per performance plan for counselors for the 2017-2018 school year will be brought before the board. We have requested to participate in the development of that plan in effort that it be equitable. Our main goal and concern tonight is that there is equity amongst our peers as it relates to the 301 monies previously promised to all high school and middle school counselors in HUSD schools. We provided lots of information to you this evening so that you are aware and educated on ways these monies have been distributed in other areas and are able to make an informed decision when including, when considering to include HUSD certified counselors in the 301 pay for performance compensation equally without requiring extra work to receive the money. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciated this, it was <laughs> very easy to follow along, thanks. All right, and then Joe Gusick. Madam President, fellow board members, Dr. Thomason, all Higley staff, parents, slash taxpayers, and last but not least, all all Higley students. My name is Joe Goosig, and I'm your lovable, slightly annoying American citizen. I'm your education larks. I actually was attending to go to the Tempe Elementary School District meeting, but I found out that uh, Board Member Whitener is stepping down. And um, I also understand that uh, Board Member Little um, did not win his re-election. So I wanted to come to you and thank both of you. I want to share a little story with you in my first experience with Higley. It was in 2004 when you were a very, very small school district. And I believe it was on this property, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I worked for a badging company, a badging ID company that serviced school districts throughout the state. I came to a small little school district that had an IT building that was no more than a double wide, or as you guys like to call it, a uh, a portable. To see the school district grow from there and be what it is today is without no credit to all of you, but especially to the people like Board Member Whitener. For the years of service, 10 and now, I thank you very much. I thank you for what you've done to move the needle as well 
who remember little. It is very important. As I continue to speak in the state of Arizona, and I will continue to speak until the day I die, this is the most important thing we can do as a community. Put forward the opportunity to educate our youth, to ensure the future of our country, our state, our community, so as to protect our families and our civil liberties. This, without a doubt, is the most important thing. I speak to the governor, I speak to many different people, and there is nothing that comes first. Because if you don't have skill set, if you don't have ability, how do you take care of yourself? How do you take care of your family? How do you advocate for your religious beliefs? You don't. So, once again, I wanted to say thank you. Thank you for all the efforts that you did. I want you to understand something. I've never expected perfection out of anybody in this state of Arizona. I do expect education excellence, and I do see it in the Higley School District, and it is one of the most wonderful things. So as Scott sits in that back of the room, and one, he will rise up to the dais, I expect the same out of him to carry on the tradition. Because once you have a tradition, don't ever lose your tradition, because getting back our tradition is very hard. So I thank you once again, and I wanted to be able to say that one more time to you, that I'm your lovable, slightly annoying, American citizen, your, your education, Lorex. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, um, I'll introduce Mr. Scott Glover, who has joined us. He will be um, joining the board in January. So um, we're excited to have him. All right, I don't have any other requests to speak to the governing board, so we will move on to 7.0. I move that we approve the consent agenda items 7.1 through 7.9. Second. One, I wanted to thank you guys, whoever put it together this way, for having our student trips and our staff trips separated between items. Thank you. So it's very specific. Um, I did have a, a few questions that I did ask ahead of time just um, regarding our Title I travel for our conference and Mr. Harris was very nice to answer that. Um, that we do have several teachers traveling for that conference with the expectation of additional training throughout the district. President Reese, members of the board, um, it's also uh, pleased to be known that the new schools going to the training are some of our new title eligible schools. So these are new schools that are eligible for Title I funds for, for Title training. I funds, and Title I funds are covering that. President Reese, I have um, some questions and I wish it to bring it to the attention of other board members here this evening. On 7.9, in reference to the job descriptions for secondary chairs in elementary, um, it says eight elementary schools and we have nine, okay? So when I'm just kind of concerned when they put this proposal. I think it says eight at each school. Eight at each school. Okay. And, and that was my question. That was the question. So you would have six, um, you have six grades, is there an arts chair at each elementary? And then if that's number seven, what is number eight? Oh, kindergarten. President Reese and members of the board. Um, so it would be a K-6 representative, and then we are leaving the additional two up to the schools to decide. It might be a special education teacher. It might be a special area teacher. It might be an auxiliary services person. It might be your school psychologist or a school counselor. Not many of our elementaries have those, but what, a speech therapist. So we are giving them some autonomy to choose which additional people they would um, have as those folks on the team. So if I understand, it's going to be 36 secondary chairs and only eight elementary. Am I hearing this correctly? 
No, there's eight positions at each elementary, correct? Eight positions per school, Mr. Per, Watovich, per right, right. Um, I also noticed that there was a pay discrepancy between elementary and secondary. And so if you could um, explain to me why there is a pay variation for why we don't pay all our teachers the same in this level. Um, President Reese, members of the board, Mr. Watovich, we did um, a comparison study like we usually do, looking at um, our neighbors and the differentiation there, and we are in line with that, um, typically because of the additional responsibilities at the middle level, particularly the high school related to ACT testing, AP, dual enrollment, those types of responsibilities. Um, the high schools are, are typically compensated an additional amount for that. We're also going to be bringing a new curriculum into our district very soon, so I think there will be a lot more additional work with our elementary teachers, so I just feel that the equity for teachers' pay should be for all our teachers in our district that are doing this type of leadership role in our school district. It's like $200 difference, I think, between the elementary and the high school teacher. So, I mean, uh, you know, we're bringing more curriculum. We're spending a great deal of money on bringing this into the school district, and these teachers are choosing to take a step above. And I just think the equity issue would be so important to say each one of you are important in this district. And so they'll say, well, you do a little bit more, and you do a I don't want to go there, <laughs> okay? And I just think we should have... Um, take a look at equity in reference to the all, all the teachers that choose to be leaders in our district like this mr little i just wanted to comment noticing that there are a few out of state travel and it's really great to see our higley students traveling out of state and competing outside of the state it's it's a great opportunity for them and higley um, has great programs great students so it's great to see them taking those opportunities President Reese. Mrs. Whitener. Um, regarding 7.9, I just had a question. Is it is the, the site administration who will choose those? Uh, Mrs. Whitener, President Reese, members of the board, yes, it is the site administrators that will choose those. We had um, at the high school and middle school, it's pretty consistent across the board in terms of they would, they would choose department level people. Our elementary schools were a little... Um, not as consistent, a little less consistent with that. We um, have some of our elementary schools who do have like a grade level rep, so a rep from every grade level. We have other elementary schools who choose from the larger body of teachers to decide on who their leadership team members are, and that may or may not be a grade level chair. So the elementaries um, have a little bit greater autonomy. Um, not in the high schools and middle schools, the 10 positions, we looked at the um, number of departments, and then they also have three or four of those positions that they can decide what area those positions come from. And also in reference to the representatives, we had a, a work study session a while back ago in reference, we had a discussion about specials and they had a work, uh, they had a group meeting and one of the things that we talked about was leadership representative um, in, reference in, in reference to their group. And I'm just, if there's discussion on if with this elementary, are they going to be looking at the specials, some type of representation in this district in reference to this? Or is this strictly the classroom teachers or where are we going with this? Uh, Mr. Watovich, no, the discussion has been that special area teachers would be included. I can't guarantee right now that every single elementary school um, would do that across the board because there'll be a process for selecting if it's a grade level person or special area or special ed or some other special position, um, as I stated earlier, but yes, they would be eligible for any one of the leadership positions. And I did notice with the difference in pay, there is a difference in um, responsibilities and duties as well between the elementary and the high school. So um, from a job description standpoint, so I think that that would be why there's a difference is that the elementary and um, job description, the roles and responsibilities, um, there are less there. So um, I, would, I would say that would be why the difference is the, the $250 difference is because there is um, less of a, a requirement for them. 
President Reese, members of the board, so that is true when we did work with administrators, both secondary and elementary, on the job descriptions. And in addition, one of the um, points of discussion that we had was the Wednesday early release days for elementary schools that teachers have some additional preparation time, and, and, it, and it's their own, um, but they will typically use some of that time to do some of their leadership responsibilities. We're at the high school level. They're teaching all day. Many of them are also teaching a six-fifth, so there's no option for them to complete some of these additional duties except for completely outside of a regular work day. But is it not that the um, high school teachers have s more release time than your elementary schools technically during a week or during a teaching, during an average teaching day? At the high school level, they have one preparation period a day. Um, and, and now the ele elementary year. teachers do not? During their special, they do. So they have three in a five-day period. But, but that's not every day because okay. we do not have specials every day. Right, okay. it is true. That's why we have the Wednesday early release times. Yes, they get out early on Wednesday. But that wasn't one of the reasons why we chose to go to release, is to start doing things like this, making decisions about, well, you can't get paid this much. Okay, I'm just gonna go there. No, I'm just pointing out that the job description, the roles and responsibilities for the elementary, um, there's less of them, and I would imagine that's why it equates to um, the difference in pay. Any other comments, questions, concerns on consent? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Ali, I'm, I, I said aye, sorry. You did? I did. Okay. So that would pass as a 4 1. All right. I was like, I didn't hear you. I gotta be louder. Real quick, as a follow up to what we approved, um, was a new um, job description for the Regional Academic Decathlon Coordinator. Um, I did receive some information from one of our um, academic decathlon coaches about the uh, work that goes into this position and also that part of coordinating is your volunteers, your proctors, things like that. So they did reach out and ask that we see if anyone is interested in helping Hamilton with their scrimmage for their academic decathlon. We participate in it, we're part of that, but it is on Friday night and they're having a hard time getting volunteers because of playoff games and things like that. You don't have to have any experience and they will, they'll train you and feed you. So um, if anyone is interested in helping Proctor for the academic decathlon um, that will be occurring on Friday at Hamilton, if you guys, if anyone could contact um, Miss Gossler at Williamsfield, she can help guide people. So it's, it kind of coincided with talking about this position because there is a lot to it. And so Hamilton has it right now and we will be having it soon. So could I that said count I would ask. For part of um, teacher hours? We haven't set up. Um, that particular activity for part of te teacher's hours or professional development or um, 301 responsibilities, but it's something as we move forward in the future, we can take a look at. We just did not see that coming right. in advance, to be honest with you. Yeah. And Ms. Gossler did share with me as well that um, other districts that um, have the academic decathlon, that their teachers do get professional development time for volunteering and proctoring and things like that. So it's something to think pretty about. Pretty academic. <laughs> it is pretty academic, yes. All right, we're gonna go on to 9.1, our um, monthly governing board financial report for October. Um, President Reese. Mrs. Whitener. I just did have one question it's more just for my memory um the trust dollars what has that been encumbered for this year 
did we use some of the trust dollars because we dissolved? Is this part of the trust that we dissolved? Or the For health the benefit next, trust? Next school year. That we're anticipating an increase in the cost of health coverage. Okay. And so we, we had planned in advance to use those for increasing costs for the 17, 18 school year. And actually to take that out for three full years. Right, okay. Now we did ask that the report that we received be shown, is that some of the, uh, some of the feedback from the community is that we do go over this item, it is an informational item. Um, so typically it's not shown and um, it was asked if it could be and I asked Dr. Thomason if we could make sure it's there. So it's there <laughs> and it shows our m and budget and what we have going on as of now. Take your cell phones and then blow up the image <laughs> as you're viewing it. Pause the video, <laughs> hit magnify about a hundred times, <laughs> but it's there. So um, does anyone have any questions or anything on the, on our monthly budget report? Uh, dual enrollment, I, we, I believe we got some money last month or this month and is reflected on this or would be on next month. I think we got about $84,000 for dual enrollment classes. Yeah. And which line item is that on? Uh, President Race, members of the board, uh, Mr. Watovich, that would be line uh, 522 IGAs. That's an intergovernmental agreement contract we have with the community college. And so you can see the amounts there and um, our carryover, what we've spent this year, what we have encumbered, um, and then uh, what we have in the accounts at that at the time we have one hundred and sixty two thousand four hundred and forty eight dollars that would be expected to be ending cash balance so it doesn't look like it came through this month correct okay, okay this is <laughs> President Reese, members of the board, uh, depending on when those funds came in um, as to when they will show up. So if they came in uh, the 1st of November, then they will show up on your November report. Yes, sir. Any other questions regarding our monthly report? All right. 9.2 informational item for the 1718 middle school and high school course guide. President Reese. Mrs. Whitener. Um, I just wanted to say I appreciate the summation of the changes or additions. I do have a couple questions. Is the teacher aid considered a, a credit? Do students get a credit for that? Yes, we should be official it's not considered a credit however it has to be entered in synergy so we put a code to it so the schedule it's a cleaner system and it's cleaner in the system so we can account for where our kids are and so that was the reason we put it in the course guide along with um early release okay and thank you for adding those changes and thank you for i know you'll have some french community members excited um, and also as just um, kind of just to, to jog our memory and to be proactive I'm just gonna say the blue form that was used last year at the high schools can we make sure it's revised and not used again are you talking about the registration form it was the release time blue form um, sure. I don't know that form okay <laughs> then, but I will I will make sure that that, that happens. <laughs> if you're talking about registration, we're talking about going online to an online registration form. And we're working with um, Anju in our uh, systems okay. to, to get that. It was a specific blue form for release time. Okay. And there were some discrepancies, a lot of confusion um, in regards to that form. Okay. President Reese, members of the board. Um, Mrs. Whitener, I do remember the form. I will review that with uh, Dr. Mallerwine to make sure the wording on that form is more descriptive of the actual um, 
requirements for the early release or for the release for period release. Thank you. That's all I had. <laughs> I know I sent Dr. Mallerwine some questions and everything last night. Um, this is just an informational item at this point, so it's not, they're not asking us to, to vote or approve the, um, the course guide just yet. So please be sure to look through it if you'd like to see anything changed or if you think we need to, to do something, please contact Dr. Mallerwine. Does it just count as an elective credit? Thank you. I didn't know if it was something that we just audit or whatever. Okay. And I didn't, I didn't compare it to the course catalog, so just make sure that's noted. And it, it could already be in there. I just didn't cross-reference it. Okay, anything else on the, the course guide? All right, 9.3, to approve the 2016-17 pay for performance plan for teachers. I move that we approve the 2016-17 pay for performance plan for teachers. Second. Questions, comments, discussion? President Reese. Okay. Mrs. Whitener. Um, uh, as in, in relation to the, the counselor issue, um, I guess maybe thoughts here that maybe it would be appropriate to wait till both those plans come forward together. Um, because um, all that I know is just what I heard here is that there was a plan coming forward. So I'd like to discuss it and put it back here. Um, is there a plan coming forward? When? What is the reasoning? I understand because 301 is for s the teachers in the classroom and part of the evaluation. We understand that part. And um, in regards to um, equalize, uh, equ equalizing the, the compensation, because it can't come from those pots. Um, so I just wanted to hear some of that first and or consider um, as, as a board member suggesting then wait until the other plan comes forward and you approve them at the same time. Uh, Mr. Rutovich. Sure, I, uh, that's kind of what I was going to say <laughs> mm -hmm. in so, reference to that, yes. Okay. President Reese, members of the board, um, I would like to uh, ask Sheila Sorensen, what's the timeline on being able to pay out our pay for performance for our December? Uh, payout and I would like to say that we are coming together for a plan for our counselors I do support the counselors I do believe this was something that I did bring up to them that I think that we need to compensate them and get that taken care of but at this time um, we did not have a plan ready we did put a, something together for the 1617 school year I love the the presentation they made I agree with 99% of everything they had to say but um, we did not have an opportunity to get a pay for performance plan together for them for the 16 17 school year but that was already in our talks and our plans for the 17 18 school year and we are putting that, that plan together for them but i would like to uh, refer to uh, mrs swanson as to the timeliness of getting the pay for performance plan together for the other certified staff is that something that we need to have approved before the the pay for performance goes out for our december checks President Reese and members of the board and um, Dr. Thomason. So the amounts that go out in December are not related to the pay for performance plan. Those are just automatic increases to the base salary that $1,350 that the teachers get in December and June. 
this is the $2,500 pot of money that they're allocated based on a successful score on their teacher evaluation and then the student achievement scores. So it doesn't have to be approved now for that. However, if you're looking at the plan, there are several elements in the plan that we can't enforce until you all have approved the plan. Um, some of the elements of that have to do with eligibility and while they would be consequences for those who couldn't receive a plan. For example, if you don't complete your contract, if you ask to be released early, you are not eligible for this pay for performance money. So anyone who's leaving now, technically they're still eligible because the board has not approved it. If a teacher receives written discipline in the form of a reprimand, um, if they got a reprimand today, they would still be eligible for this pot of money because you haven't yet approved this plan. Um, so there are some things that are very timely that um, we would ask that you would go ahead and approve this plan. Um, we have a draft of the plan for the counselors. Um, we brought that to the board back in the second half of the 2013-14 school year, um, and the plan was not approved at that time by the governing board. So we still have the draft of that. I met with a couple of the counselors today. We'd like to go back and revisit that, um, shore it up a little bit, and bring that back to you. Um, but again, it would be the same kind of circumstance. Any group that we did that with, um, no matter what we put in there for eligibility conditions, they are going to be eligible for that money until the board approves the plan. Um, there's a secondary timeline here, and I'm not going to know all of that right off the top of my head, but we do have to submit to, and Gary, you might know, there's a classroom site fund report that goes to the state and works through our auditors, um, and they are waiting for us to have this approved so that we can report to them. We, we have to report that we have it in, uh, it's been approved and we have it in place according to the statute. Um, there's not a timeline for that necessarily, but they have kind of been asking since August um, and so we it's it's timely in that sense as well to be able to say that yes we have a plan and we're doing what the statute said we are supposed to do. Dr. Thomason you said in reference to the presentation that you agree with 99% of what they said this evening so in best interest what's the one percent and if it's not that of a major of an issue whatever you could discuss with us on this. I if, don't if that piece is not part of our agenda item, so I don't think that, Linda, I don't think that we can really talk about that because this, the agenda item is teacher specific, this is counselor specific, or, or, help me. Or if <laughs> I just put an amendment, or, if, think, okay. or, or if I just put an amendment to, to include them on this. Ms. Good said this. we're fine. Okay. So, sure. perfect. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Because I was just curious if I could just make an amendment just to include them this evening on this. We, if there's you know, not a plan if you read for the that. If you read the plan, the plan is specific to teachers. I understand and that. And their evaluation and the process, process and their correct, hearings correct. and the, yes. there's different, okay. they need their own separate plan. Okay. And, and the pots of money are completely different. Okay, okay. We have 301, which is what is it? 310, 311, three, is that? Zero one one zero one two zero one three. So and that we understand that three hundred one is just not three hundred one. It's three hundred one in three separate sections. Um, I, I the, the I don't know the one part that maybe I caught disagreed is a five hundred dollar one time. I'm say for masters. If you have your masters, it's not five hundred one time. Isn't that five hundred on top of your salary? Correct. It's included in your base, and, and any increase that you would get would be with that included thirty eight thousand plus five hundred. If you got two percent, it would be on top of thirty eight thousand five hundred dollars. I wanted it's to year after year after year that for the public um, that we it's we do not give our masters you know, the teachers or counselors just a one time. It's on top of your salary. It increases their salary by five hundred. It's not a stipend. Accurate. So if. Um, in reference to this, you are having dialogue right now with the counselors and will be coming back to us in the near future. Is that what I understand? So you indicated that we were looking at a 1718 plan. Absolutely. We, we definitely um, will put together a plan for the 1718 school year. We did have something for the 1617 school year that we can bring to you in a work study or I can send you in a superintendent's report update. That was a plan that we um, wanted to make available to the counselors without um, going into the 301 pots or without giving a gift of taxpayers funds. So we did have that planned for them, but they are absolutely 100% correct. They did work the extra days 
for that plan. Right now, we are in the process of putting a pay for performance plan together that would look much more like the teacher's plan. Okay, so I would strongly suggest you we don't um, penalize for the, the current school year. I mean, with one, two, three funds and override, this is something we should be able to implement or even, you know, it, by the you know something should be in place by the end of the school year that covers the 16 17 school year and that's just my in i agree perceptions or perspective president reese members of the board i hear direction from the board to put a plan together that would compensate our guidance counselors for the 16 17 school year is that correct that we would like to see something that could cover the 16 17 school year correct. yes we can't put that together in regards to the teachers, it is statute that it has to be um, go through the process every single year. It is. Right. And of, of no blame or anything, is this a little bit later than we normally get this? What is the, what's the ideal timeline? Mrs. Whitener and um, President Reese, members of the board, this is about when we have brought the plan to the board every single year. We start those discussions once school starts. We had our first meeting in July this year. Um, it's pretty much the same plan. Took us just a little bit to, to hammer through that. And then because it has to go through, there has to be a presentation. That presentation happened right when we came back after fall break. And then the voting has to happen. And we would have brought it in um, November, but the voting happened right before that board meeting and we didn't get it on the agenda in time. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't another board member prior right. to now. So we could have brought it two weeks ago, um, but there wasn't a board meeting yeah. to bring it to. And sooner the better, I mean, obviously, but you know, year 13 14 is I recall that did happen later in January and there was um, some hiccups because of that um, of that that time frame so um, and you know just with those those the, the situations with the budget but now that we have the funding in place it's time to I know you guys will get it done just one, maybe one more comment, um, President Reese and members of the board. So when the override passed and I brought that big proposal for compensation and it included longevity and all of those things, there was 1% of that amount of money that we brought and we specifically said it was an equivalent for pay for performance mm -hmm. for the counselors. And to get to that equivalent dollar amount, it was about 20 days at their daily rate of pay. A lot of times in the district when teachers are doing stuff above and beyond, we're paying them 20 bucks an hour. So in this case, we instead figured out what their daily rate was times 20 days. Um, there are many responsibilities that the counselors tend to have when school's out um, and then before school starts with registration and whatnot. Um, they were getting some additional days over the last few years, but not enough to get done what they needed to get done. So they were sometimes there working without compensation. So the 20 days paid them fully for the days that they needed before school, and then there's 10 of those days left that they would be paid in June. The daily rate um, average is actually more for those 20 days, the average of it, um, than what the total amount of compensation is for our teachers for 301. So yes, they're having to work the 20 extra days because it'd be a gift of public funds to do otherwise, but at the end of the day, the additional money that they'll make for those 20 days in most cases is more than the $5,200 that our teachers are making with Prop 301. And those 20 days that we've, we're compensating for are pretty required I mean, you said that we have the time before school starts and, and the time bef um, after school ends, so, and we have a few extra days in there, but that's what's necessary for them to get their, their jobs done, is that? I think in, in, in maybe some cases, um, although I have you know heard them say they don't necessarily need that many, and my answer was we gave you that many because it's what made that compensation more equitable. Um, and not like they can't work on those days, special projects help out with administration, but when we bring the performance pay plan back to you, um, and my goal is to do that in about February, late January, early February, because I want to get them together and have an opportunity for them to give some input, um, that when we bring it back, we may then also talk about the actual number of additional days that they need. So maybe it's not 20, maybe it's 15, maybe it's 12, maybe it's 18, um, but we would have that discussion and then bring both of those things back at the same time. Okay. President Reese. Mr. Little. 
I just wanted to thank our counselors for coming forward and bringing it to our attention and thank you for your hard work and helping our students. It's an important role that you play. Um, it also makes me think, right, um, and help me here. We have classified staff and certified staff. Certified staff, you know, in the, the equivalent being outside of education would be an exempt and full-time employee. It would only make, it, it makes sense to me that all exempt full-time employees would have some sort of pay performance plan. So are, is there another group, you know, we're, we're talking about the counselors today, is there another group that's still a certified staff but not a teacher that may not have a pay performance plan? Mm -hmm. We've talked about this with the yep. speech. Yes, so, so in February, um, when we bring back the plans, it would be probably several different plans. We would look at all of the certified, not administrators, not classroom teacher positions. So you have a speech therapist, a school psychologist. We have the instructional specialists that are here at the district office. Um, we would be looking at those. And in my really perfect world, we would have some kind of a plan for all staff to be able to earn paper performance, including classified staff. Any other questions or comments? So where does this yeah. stand? Are we are we going to hold on this until, or are we going to approve this knowing that a, a plan is coming for other groups? Well, the motion, the motion is to approve. Is to approve. Um, sounds like we have, we do have some timelines with an auditor that needs to, uh, we need, and requirements that we need to to get moving on. So um, right now the motion is to approve the plan as it is. Um, and we did have discussion for administration to be looking at other plans that we would like to see before the end of the school, uh, to cover this school year. Okay. If that helps. Thank you. All right. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Allie, was that you? Yes, sorry. Do we have a 5-0? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Motion carries 5-0. All right. And then we'll look forward to more information. Uh, 9.4. President Reese. Mrs. Whitener. Oh. This is Miss Goods piece here <laughs> so I, this move, one is I move that the board not vote on the proposed change changes to the ASBA bylaws that's my motion that's a perfectly legitimate action okay. to take okay any questions or comments regarding that so it's it's a proposed amendment of the bylaws through um, Arizona School Board um, association for us to give direction to staff. Mrs. Whitener has made the motion that as a board we don't vote, um, that we not vote on the proposed changes for the ASBA bylaws. I will second that. And my just reasoning is, you know, s some years we go in waves where we have board members who are very active and, and know what's a little bit more informed of what's going on. Sometimes we've had members on the executive committee and I don't feel like I have enough knowledge to, um, mm -hmm. to, to vote on this. And I know that there are other school board or members of the committees who do. So all this is saying that <clears throat> we're not giving our input regarding the change of these bylaws. So does anyone have any questions? Comments on this one? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5 0. And if you'd like to know more about those, then please attend more <laughs> ASBA, ASBA meetings. Okay, so 9.5. This is the first read, um, and we're going to ask that it stay a first read for the amendment of policy HD, the meet and confer <coughs> procedures, because there is updates that need to be completed before we approve it. So we're going to um, keep it as a first read. And 
uh, just kind of review it. Does anyone have any questions regarding um, policy HD, the meet and confer procedures? No. Maybe Ms. Hornson, you want to just give us a, I know you were talking to us about it earlier. President Reese, members of the board, um, we're just looking to align our policy more with our practice. Um, so there's some language in there. Um, like, for example, it says that the board meetings will be in the district, held in the district boardroom. And we meet here sometimes, but we also sometimes meet at a school site. Um, we usually decide collaboratively with that team where we're going to meet. Um, there's some language in there that talks about um, submitting proposals at least 10 days before we have discussions in writing to the superintendent. We'd like to just lighten that up, give ourselves a little bit more flexibility, I guess, if you will. Um, we do meet at the beginning of the year and establish our goals and objectives and the topics that we're going to talk about. Um, and then at other times, things, things will come up that we want to be able to talk about, and it isn't always within 10 working days submitted in writing to the superintendent. So um, we have a pretty good thing going. I believe with our current HEA and our membership and our interest-based negotiation process and we just would like to align this with our practices all right does anyone have any other questions okay so then we'll look forward to coming back for uh, a second read and adoption <coughs> 9.6 president Reese mrs. Whitener I move that we waive the second read and approve an amendment of policy JFBA unsafe school choice. Waive the first read. Second. Yes. That's okay. I was just clarifying. Okay. Um, just reasons being it's just the name change from No Child Left Behind Act to Every Student Succeeds Act of 2015. Does anyone have any questions on this one? It's. Nope. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5 0. We are at 9.7. President Reese. Mr. Little. I move that we waive the second reading and approve the amendment of policy JLCC, communicable infectious diseases. Second. Ellie, was that you? That was me. Okay. All right. Any questions or comments on um, this one? Um, President Reese. I'm trying not to right now. <laughs> Mr. Little. Um, I'm, I'm curious. So most, the amendment is really um, the lice portion? It, it's and, and not the number of days to not be infectious? It's to follow the American Pediatric Recommendation. Yes, we have the what they call the no-knit policy, where it's going to make my head, it's just talking about it, <laughs> um, where if there's any visible knits anywhere in the hair, the child has to go home. And that really has been determined to not be necessary, that the only ones that are viable are within a quarter inch of the scalp, so that if they're farther away from the scalp than that, they're not viable. And in fact, many of those are just empty casings that are any farther away. So that's what it is, is allowing children to return to school if treatment has been given and there are none less than a quarter inch from the scalp. Thank you for the clarification. <laughs> Any other questions or comments on that one? <laughs> yeah, and that's just the, the American Pediatrics Association and... The Arizona Board of... Um, Department of Department Health. Department of Health, they've all it's a ba determined... It's basically across the board. And I think Jen Corey left. She was the real person. Oh, <sighs> <laughs> I was going to call on her, but... Um, We're good. That's yeah, the Department of Health had changed their policy yes. some time ago. Yes. Um, saying that it's, yeah. it's well, having come from a hospital environment, I'm just used to a little stricter. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So I was curious. Yeah, they say the chances of it spreading at that point, if they've received treatment and everything, that it's it's not worth keeping the kids out of school. Sounds good. I know that one's different. 
Any other questions or comments on this one? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, five I All right. So we are at 10.0, 10.1. We are um, going to recess into executive session to consult with an attorney for legal advice concerning possible litigation and consider and instruct staff concerning the sale and or purchase of real property as authorized by ARS 38-431.03A3 and 4. And we will adjourn the meeting um, at the close of executive session. Doom our regular meeting. We are on 11.1. I move that we approve the sale of 4.96 acres adjacent to Bridges Elementary School and the commission agreement with Horizon Real Estate Group, Inc., DBA, NAI, Horizon, and authorize the superintendent to take all actions reasonably necessary to complete this sale. Second. Any other questions? Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. We already have the high school guidance counseling program on our future agenda items, and I think that covers multiple areas. Mm -hmm. And then um, we also have an information on special, special academic program at Williamsfield. Anything else that we need to add at the moment? We're going to have a uh, committee formed in our com in our school district, and then they were going to re be reporting back to the uh, in a work study session. So I uh, uh, can anticipate a presentation soon or timeline on that. I will put it on yeah. future agenda, and we will look and see when we have okay. that information. Perfect. Thank you. President Weiss, members of the board. Update. We do have that um, ongoing committee that is working on that, and they do know that at the start of the year, January, they will be presenting to the board at a work study. Looky there. Okay. Any other items? All right. President Reese. Mrs. Whitener. I move that we adjourn. Are you sure? Second. <laughs> Third. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Carries that could be my last one, unless unless you call a special meeting. Just saying. We could call a special meeting. Yeah. Depends.